In this mini lecture, I'm going to talk about principles of collection management and development. Before we talk about what collection management is, I want to address the core values of librarianship, which underpin all policies and practice, but which are most evident in the way you develop and manage your collection. The principles of librarianship are often attributed to Dr. S. R. Ranganathan, who devised five laws of library science in 1931. These are, books are for use, every reader his or her book, every book its reader, save the time of the reader, and the library is a growing organism. Of course, today, instead of just dealing with books, we're working with a wide variety of media. However, these principles guide the librarian's ethics and provide a summary of the core values of librarianship. The core values all librarians work towards include being guided by their ethics, equity, equality, diversity and inclusion, as well as anti-censorship, intellectual freedom and the free flow of ideas and information. The library welcomes multiple perspectives and is non-judgmental and values human rights as a provider of information and education. These core values are outlined in the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, otherwise known as IFLA, the ALIA Core Values Statement, and they're drawn from the UN Declaration on Human Rights and Freedoms. Here we see statements such as, School library services must be provided equally to all members of the school community, regardless of age, race, gender, religion, nationality, language, professional or social status. Specific services and materials must be provided for those who are unable to use mainstream library services and materials. Library and information services professionals commit themselves to core values, including promotion of the free flow of information and ideas through open access to recorded knowledge, information and creative works, the connection of people to ideas, commitment to literacy, information literacy and learning, and respect for diversity and individuality of all people. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. Everyone has the right to education and to freely participate in the cultural life of the community. The core values of teacher librarians also align with the Melbourne Declaration, which has the goals that Australian schooling promotes equity and excellence and that all young Australians become successful learners, confident and creative individuals and active and informed citizens. So what do all these statements mean for your role of teacher librarian and for collection development and management within a school? Firstly, you need to represent in your collection the diversity of your school population. Everyone in your school community should be able to see themselves included and reflected through the collection. This includes ethnicities, class, sexualities, genders and so forth. This can be an interesting area if you're working in a school which is founded around a particular religious ethos. In these cases, you need to establish your policies, work with your principal and your school community to ensure that the policies are reflective of the school ethos, but also meet the needs of your library users. This can be a tricky path, and I would direct you to Alison Zilstra's blog, Journey of a Christian Schools Library for some insight here. Alison is a past student of the QUT TL course, and she blogs about how important it is to develop a school library that aligns with the context of the community in which it is situated, while respecting the needs of the learners and students in the school. The core values of librarianship refer to anti-censorship, intellectual freedom, and the free flow of ideas. These are reflected in the way that you develop your collection and make it accessible to all members of the school community. The collection must reflect multiple perspectives and the selection of resources should be non-judgmental. What this doesn't mean is that you include everything in your collection. The selection process involves applying criteria 
including authority, objectivity, and the skill, competence, and purpose of the Earth author. Basically, the role of the teacher librarian is to determine whether the resource is accurate and unbiased in the treatment of a subject, but not to select based upon whether you personally agree or disagree with the arguments the author is making. So being aware of these values, how is this applied in the management of the collection? Managing the library collection means organising, planning and developing policy and procedures, budgeting and establishing workflow for the process of identifying resources right through to getting them available to borrow or access. Managing the library management system involves your library catalogue and possibly online databases. Some of you may have a very small and simple system, while others might have large and complex federated systems that bring all of your physical and virtual resource records together into one space. In addition to this, you need to manage the physical and virtual spaces where the resources are located. This includes the shelving and layout of the physical resources, as well as how you make virtual resources accessible, whether that's database records, ebooks, audiobooks, and other digital files. Within collection management is the concept of collection development. This is how you decide what to purchase for the library, as well as how you accession these materials, that is, classifying and cataloguing the items, maintaining and repairing the items as needed, shelving the physical items so they're put back when they're went so they can be reborrowed by someone else, as well as stock taking at regular intervals. It also involves weeding, culling or deselecting of resources. Your library will grow out of control if you keep purchasing and never remove old or out of date titles. It's far better to have a small collection that's up to date and attractive than a large collection which is shabby and outdated. Collection management, and in particular collection development, is guided by your policy. This is one of the most important policies of the library, and if you find yourself in a school library without any policies, it would be one of the first that I would develop. The collection management policy outlines the purpose and scope of the content of the collection. It gives the criteria for selection and deselection of resources, and it contains the challenge materials policy. There are a number of different resources available to guide you in developing these policies. They have similarities across libraries, but should be developed to align with your school and library vision and mission, and to reflect the context and population of your school community. It's essential that you have a challenged or disputed materials policy. This will make your life so much easier. Everyone has different opinions on what is suitable for younger students, and if you have an angry or upset member of the community come in who wants to talk about a particular resource, having this policy will mean you feel confident to handle the situation. It also means that all issues will be dealt with fairly and objectively. Having a disputed materials form allows the person who is making the complaint to clarify their issues and explain their reasoning in a structured way. Once they've completed the form, you can then calmly and rationally evaluate the complaint, discuss it with your principal, and give the person a balanced and constructive response. Having a very strongly articulated collection development policy means that you can feel confident that your professional judgments are backed up by the library's core values and that you have the backing of your principal who should read and ratify these statements. This is particularly important when you consider that your collection will almost definitely include materials that address topics that are considered by some to be controversial, such as same-sex marriage, different sexualities, LGBTI perspectives, and in some schools, topics such as magic, witchcraft, or paganism, which can also be seen problem as problematic. You might recall that there was some debate a few years ago about whether Harry Potter was considered an appropriate book in fundamental Christian schools, because it referred to these types of topics. Students do have a right to see themselves reflected in the curriculum and in the materials that are held in the library. For instance, in the range of fiction that you hold, they need to read stories about themselves, and if they are in a minority group or a disadvantaged group, 
or one that isn't consistent with the particular ethos of the religion that your school community is based around, that's when there can be really great tensions that you will need to work with your principal and school community to resolve. At all times, the librarian must resist censorship and work to ensure the school community has access to a balanced and representative collection. You may be feeling that it all sounds like a very big job, and that is why some of these tasks are delegated to your library technician or to your highly val valued volunteers. Deciding who does what can be a political area of management, especially if you're taking on a position where the library tech or the library aid has previously been in charge of many of the tasks that the teacher librarian should perhaps be doing. It also depends on how much time is allocated to your library support and what their skills and qualifications are. It's the role of the teacher librarian to make the selections for what is included in the collection. You can see that the library collection development is complex and requires not only someone who has qualifications in librarianship, but also a person who will be able to take responsibility if there are ever challenges to the material that has been selected. Once chosen, who does the purchasing, the receiving and the cataloguing of the resources is usually dependent on the individual context. A rule of thumb here is that anything that's a professional role is the responsibility of the TL and anything that's a paraprofessional role can be completed by your support staff. Paraprofessional means that it doesn't require a professional judgment, decisions that will influence the management of the library. Personally, I preferred to do the cataloguing myself when I was working in a school library, as it meant that I was very familiar with the resources and had a really good knowledge of the collection. However, many teacher librarians don't have time to do this and their library support staff can manage the process. Managing cataloguing is particularly easier for school library support staff if your school library subscribes to SCIS. SCIS is the school's catalogue information service. It's an Australian service and if your library subscribes to it, it means that you can download catalogue records directly into your library management system and then just tailor them to your context. This is a lot faster and simpler than original cataloguing and doesn't require professional judgments to be made. So that's collection management in a nutshell. It's a challenging but fascinating part of the role of a teacher librarian. Having a good understanding of the complexities of collection management and development means that you can advocate more confidently if there are discussions about whether the role of the TL can be replaced by a paraprofessional or volunteer. You can see that developing and managing a vibrant and representative library collection that actually contributes to student learning requires extensive professional expertise and knowledge.